Hey everyone, um, I'm Charles, I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Rebag.com. Uh, we're a seamless service for reselling your designer handbags. Um, so it's going to be way less technical. Um, um, so I started a company about a year or so ago, uh, mostly for angel investment from uh, Fabrice Grinda, um, that a lot of you may know here. Recently, we raised our seed round, um, four million mostly from um, General Catalyst. Um, and what we try to solve is, is a way simpler problem. It's, um, there's just a lot of good things that are you know, stuck in, in people's closets, right? And th there's just so much value, uh, and unfortunately it gets stuck for a simple reason, which is it's just way, way, way too complex and time consuming to deal you know, with any of the sort of reselling. Um, and that's kind of why we sort of came up with, with Rebag. And Rebag makes it incredibly easy for you to sell your bags. Literally, you can download your app, our app, um, on the App Store, send a picture, it literally takes 10 seconds, um, and we'll send you a price. You know, it's a firm number, you wanna sell, we're here. Um, in New York, we'll pick up your bag, and you're in the US, we'll send you a box. And that's it, two days later, when we get in office, we need two days, uh, and that's the time we need to authenticate and check the quality of your bag, and then it's on your account. So it's extremely simple compared to, especially the frustration of um, consignment experiences uh, and any sort of peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. Um, people often ask, you know, is, is it big enough? How big is the market for handbag? The slide is a bit complex, but basically it's really huge, uh, mostly because handbags are just a beautiful category um, because they're extremely sought after. They're probably the number one item that any sort of um, you know women would would want um, in the world. Uh, they are ex extremely liquid. There's no size. Very high ticket value. They resist to age. Um, and at the end of the day, to make a really big company, sort of hundred, hundred million plus run rate, you only need sort of like six thousand monthly handbags. That's probably something you can sort of put in a room that's just as big as here. Um, um, our customer is typical um, sort of you know maybe let's say Upper East Side, so she's sort of, you know, very busy, successful, professional, doesn't have a whole lot of time uh, to sort of deal with that. Uh, at the same time, the appeal of cash is pretty strong. Um, obviously, one of the things that I get asked a lot is, yes, we're bringing, you know, working capital and, and inventory risk in our business. So there's a few things we need to do to, to make that right. Uh, and one is, is developing, you know, a, a lot of pricing discipline. Um, and what we're building basically is the equivalent of, of killing blue books for handbags. So our approach is extremely database driven. Um, basically we compile a database of sort of all, all the handbags that are out there in the world at an extreme sort of granularity, you know, the size, the model, um, the condition and all of that. And we overlay that with sort of our own data because we sort of flip the same bags over and over and that sort of spits our, our sort of buying price. Um, we also develop, developed a very unique way uh, of sourcing handbags. So it's very much inspired by multi-level marketing, things like Avon. Um, so basically, we commission people who are just normal people and who sort of source for us in a crowdsourced way and, and on a commission base. So typically, we go to people in retail, uh, personal shoppers, stylists, um, and we give them a nice commission. And they have you know, 10, 20, 30 people um, that they know very well, and, and it's a win-win because for us it's it's largely scalable. You know, we have four people in our sales team. We have fifteen hundred partners. Those are fifteen hundred people who are in the closet, sort of sourcing for us, and have access to um, first-hand merchandise uh, before anyone else. Um, we actually have two sites. Um, our site Rebag is where uh, sellers go to sell. We have another site Trendly.com, which is where um, buyers go to buy. Um, the reason we, we separated the two um, is mostly because it's a different person. Um, given the category is so high and the ticket is so high, there's actually not so much overlap in what we do. The seller really wants to sort of, you know, get done with the transaction and then go back to the Chanel store. The buyer's a little bit more, you know, aspirational, wants a luxury, you know, e-commerce experience, but doesn't have a whole lot to sell. Um, and we've also been able to sort of high growth uh, a little bit by sort of multi-listing our, our inventory and sort of, you know, recycling buyers that we get from, from marketplaces. Um, there's definitely a lot of things happening in the space. Um, and, and generally it can be summarized in two things. 
on the one hand is all those companies sort of a la eBay, um, companies like Tradesy and others that are building, you know, a verticalized marketplace for fashion, which is a very big need. Um, cause eBay is a very, very difficult experience for, for this category. Um, and that's a huge market. Now, the reality is very much appealing for sort of low and medium sized type of tickets. When you get into luxury categories, people typically want service. Um, and it's difficult to do in a purely uh, peer-to-peer sort of kind of model. So our sort of main competitor is a company called The Real Real that does, you know, consignment online. And what we try to do is, is you know, go um, change the, the consignment model, make it instant and immediate. And we think that that's going to bring a lot of new sellers into this market. Um, and the beauty of what we do is despite having, you know, we own the bags, but because we're very disciplined in, in, in price and these bags are in high demand, there's actually very high liquidity, um, which is almost surprising when, you know, we sell thousand dollar plus handbags, you know, our ticket is over $1,300 on average. We sell, you know, $10,000 Birkins, just like, you know, hot, hot cakes. It's, it's very, very surprising, but there's, it's because there's just incredible demand for sort of these types um, of items. And that's pretty much it. That's it. Questions? Sure. Sure. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so here's the thing. Uh, they don't like us a lot, right? Uh, that's the starting point, right? Because brands live in a world like many, many decades ago where there was no internet. And, you know, you, you, most of these brands, you realize Chanel opened uh, an online store a few months ago, right? So Hermes, you can't really buy a Hermes bag online at Hermes, right? So um, it's very new for them and they sort of think, and we love brands, right? Because we love the work that they do and sort of the universe that they create, but you sort of have to evolve a little bit, like this is happening. It's happening anyways, um, because people are realizing, especially post-crisis, the value of sort of sustainability and sort of collaborative consumptions, having more uh, collaborative patterns um, and cyclicality in the ways we consume. Uh, and that's why we actually have a lot of conversations. If you fast forward, I think five or 10 years, brands are somehow, in my opinion, gonna be involved in that sphere. So I don't know if that means acquiring some of these marketplaces, develop sort of their own sort of, you know, private label service, but something's going to happen because right now you find, you know, Chanel bags that are fake, you know, on eBay, on Alibaba, you know, and it's very disruptive for the brands. So it would be better in a way to sort of own that and make it, you know, more curated and controlled in sort of a luxury fashion. Yeah, so, so you know, the real real is basically it's consignment, right? So the, the, the trouble of consignment, which exists offline, also exists online. What happens is you're going to have to send an item. They're going to give you a quote that's indicative, that's very broad. There's no certainty on selling. And then you're going to wait three months, four months, six months till you get anything if something happens and there's no guarantee of price. So if the price reduces, it's, it's going to hit you. So what we do it instead is like, hey, you know, you're done in two days and you always transact at a price that you like. So there's kind of a debate here. Do you want to get it done now for real, 100% guaranteed, or do you want to take an option, you know, for something uncertain in the future? Yeah, you know, we definitely, I, I guess pricing is important. The, the trouble in what do we, there's two types of pricing. There's pricing for the seller and there's pricing for the buyer. So there's something that we struggle all day long. Because on the trendly side, which is our e-commerce side, you know, there's a willingness to pay for people, right? There's somehow that, you know, based on this product and this item with this level of service, because it's secondary market, people have a ceiling at some point. And we try to be reasonably liquid, which means we need to be reasonably affordable. You know, at the same time, you have to pay a provider, which is a seller, uh, and she's not going to sell, you know, unless it's appealing to her as well. So there's a little bit of that debate where we're trying to price ourselves so that it feels good when you buy on Trendly, like, oh my God, like almost like buying discount, you know, this kind of satisfaction. At the same time, it needs to be real dollars for a seller so that she feels good about. So there's always this gap that's narrow where we try to stand. 
Yeah, we're definitely, we try to be appealing for sure. There's definitely some pricing uh, incentives that are thrown. You know, if you go on our site, uh, usually you have people like, oh my God, you know, it feels good. So there's definitely some of that going on. Yeah, you know, the, the market, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You know, uh, the, the real real takes 35%. You know, we, we probably try to price ourselves in similar level. Like our opinion is like, you know, if you can get similar money, but you don't have to wait, uh, that's probably a good deal. Yeah, it's just around there for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a huge issue. Um, so that's why actually we have this two day limit uh you know we would love to be able to pay at the source it's impossible to authenticate based on user submitted pictures so we can price on user submitted pictures but we need though the physical item um and during those two days we've developed a network of experts and that's very very difficult to do um and that's why we have those two days and we only pay after it's sort of green lighted in our system Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, a, a lot of that is is going after day by day and convincing one person after the other. There was no no specific magic that happened. A lot of that was that at the source, at the, the first days, we sort of used existing marketplaces. So I think we sort of build our brand among, you know, a bigger marketplace universe. So I think that gave a little bit of conviction. Um, and over time, you make people happy. They return. Uh, we did a lot of collaborations with like pretty big bloggers. So I think that helped a lot. Um, and on the reback side, we actually did a lot of work because there is, on the reback side, people send us bags and they're not paid. You know, they're paid, you know, a week later or something. So at the beginning, this was a, this was a hurdle. And through, I think our partnership process where, you know, they work through a salesperson or someone that they know, this person has this trust. And I think it facilitates, especially the early transactions. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I guess we do, we've done a different things. Um, on the reback side, I think our partnership sort of multi-level is kind of the biggest thing that we do. Um, we are actually, uh, we're actually running a TV campaign now, which is working reasonably well. Um, so that's helping a lot right now. Um, on the Trendly side, we've, we've, you know, listed ourselves on existing marketplaces in the earlier phases. Um, we actually do very minimalistic sort of paid marketing. Really what we do most is branding. Uh, so it's actually a lot of like PR and, uh, just collaborations with a lot of, uh, a lot of bloggers, like some of the biggest names that are out there. Cool. Thanks.